Today we're going to be learning how to blur the background of a photo to make the subject really stand out in the foreground and it's all going to be done on Affinity Photo on the iPad. I'm not long back from the holidays with the family and we visited Windsor Castle, Legoland Windsor and Harry Potter Studios. We did the Harry Potter Studio Tour. While there we took a few photographs and we took this brilliant one of my eldest son at platform nine and three quarters with the trolley running into the platform. When looking back over this photo I thought I could enhance it a wee bit just by giving the photo a bit of depth by blurring out the background and making the main subject stand out. So I thought I'd make a tutorial out of it. So let's get into it. Here's my eldest son at platform nine and three quarters going to the Hogwarts Express. And this is a lovely photo. The only thing that I might change in this photo is to try to get a bit more of this depth of field. And I'm going to try to blur this background out or blur, blur all this bit. And then hopefully by the time it comes to about these pillars, it'll be in focus or just past these pillars. We're going to go straight into the selections persona. We're going to click on the Smart Selection tool and we're just going to make it a wee bit bigger. Try to get all of my sun in here. I know I'm going a bit wild here and getting too much in, but we've got everything in. And if we go to Mode Subtract and bring it down, we'll start to try to take away some of this stuff now. down here and with using the smart selection tool sometimes it's a bit of a dance between uh, changing the different modes sometimes there's a bit of going back and forth so we'll try to take away this and hopefully it picks up the hoodie okay there's nine and three quarters in the background we'll make that a bit blurry hopefully too and again, we're doing that dance where we'll go to add mode now. And if it's not perfect, we are going to go into the refine selection brush. And hopefully anything that we miss, it will pick it up okay. And it's doing a good job here. It's good when there's good contrast and colours associated to the photo where Affinity can really pick out the difference. And it is unbelievable the job it can do. Is there anything else a wee bit down here? We'll go to subtract, make it a wee bit bigger. And I think that's okay because we're getting into the ter territory of, I don't think I want this bit blurred out by the time it gets this far. So we'll just do the hands. That selection is looking well. So we'll refine it now. I'll maybe just go over his hair just so Affinity can take a second look at that. If there's any improvements needed, it'll do that. Under output, we'll go to new layer with mask, okay. And that's looking good. We're going to bring in the background again. We're going to blur out the background and then apply a mask to it. So hopefully this bit will be very blurry. And this bit not so much, so we'll go into our filters. We'll scroll all the way down to Gaussian Blur. And that's quite nice already. That's still at 6 pixels. We'll maybe bring this up to 10. Oh, I'm tempted to maybe go 15, shall we say. And that looks very, very blurry. And it doesn't look great at the minute. But by applying a mask to this, hopefully... This will stay blurry and then it'll come into focus. So do I want 15 or do I want 10? Even 10 is not bad. Go back to 15. Oops. 
here. We'll try 12.5. Saying I can't decide, we're going for 12.5. And again, you can do split mode. The difference of that is really unbelievable. And this is the kind of kind of cool thing you can do in Affinity. So I'm applying that. It's not looking great at the minute. My sun looks really well. The background bit looks well, but we want all this in focus. So for this, we're going to go to our mask layer. And I've made a mistake because I should have duplicated the background. So I have to do two fingers to undo that blur and then duplicate this layer. So we'll go up to the three dots here or we'll go into the uh, photo persona. We'll duplicate it. And now we can apply a filter to this background because this is going to be masked out or part of it's going to be masked out. And that that's the reason why we need a background or we need a layer in the background. So I'll explain it better in a wee second. We'll do what we just did. We'll go in the filter, Gaussian blur, 12.5 apply. Now we're going to set this layer as a mask. Mask layer, twirl down. If you don't know about masks, there's a mask video. I did a good few videos again. And if you can get your head around how to do masks, you will be able to produce some outstanding results in the Finley photo. For this, if you if you remember masks, dark means hidden. So we we'll want to hide this blurry background, which is this one here. So we want to hide this. So all this, I want to be black. And then I want this bit not to be hidden, which is, of course, keeping it white. So black nighttime means hidden. White daytime means revealed or non-hidden. And for this, we're going to have to do the the fill tool. And by default, the fill tool is already on black and white. So if I just say simply drag from here and you can see what it's doing straight away. You can see this is making it blurry and this is not blurry. If we make it to about maybe about that pillar there. Straight away, you can see what's happening and it looks really, really well. Or in my eyes, it looks really, really well. We'll come up here to show you what's happening. And you can see it here on the mask layer. Everything in the white is being revealed. So this layer, if we turn it on and off, this is simply our blur, la our blur background where we applied 12.5 pixels of blur. This has now been blurred out. And then slowly from about here to here, it's revealing the background there below. So if I just turn this off, you can see even better what's going on now. So our top layer is my son, who we use the smart selection brush to cut out. The next layer, we used the Gaussian blur to really blur that background. And then we masked it out so that only the background bit would be revealed. And when you turn all the layers on, that looks really, really nice. And I'll do a quick before and after. If we bring the history slider, we'll move this over and just bring it. That's what we had at the start. That's what it is now. That's what we had. That's what it is now. And that's really, really nice. A really simple technique with powerful, powerful results. Again, the main focus in this picture is my son, a platform nine three quarters. Anything else in this background is a bit of a distraction. And that's what we wanted to take out. That's what we've done. And I'm really happy how this has come out. So there you have it. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully you learned something. And keep it in mind, if you're reviewing your photos this summer, you could use this same technique. Please like this video, that would mean a lot. Please subscribe, there's more videos coming out each and every week, sometimes two or three every week. Please feel free to leave a comment, I read and reply to each and every one. As always, thanks for watching, hope you have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.